Hi, welcome to Learn the Stats. This video is going to go over the normal distribution in approximately five minutes. I want to make it worth your time. You're probably here uh, to learn or better understand what you were taught in class or from work. So let's get right into it. Now the normal distribution has several different names that it goes by. A bell-shaped curve, the Gaussian distribution, they're all the exact same thing. And the normal distribution is used for a lot of things. If you've taken the ACT or SAT test, you've probably been given a score in terms of percentile. That percentile is actually based off the normal distribution and where you placed in it. Uh, another example would be height, IQ, birth weight, pretty much anywhere the central limit theorem is applied, that's where you'll find the normal distribution. The notation for the normal distribution is this, where you have the normal being represented by n, and then you have the mean as mu, and then you have the standard deviation or the variance as sigma and sigma squared. Depending on where you're at, you'll see one or the other, or maybe even both, so I'm just merely mentioning it here. Another thing with this notation to, to note is that in the normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are all the exact same thing. So whatever mu is, that's what the, the mean, median, and mode is. Because they all line up right in the middle, that's where most of the, uh, that's where the highest point is. Given that the distribution is symmetrical, that's where the mode is. The standard deviation is important because that's what makes it wide or tall. So the bigger the standard deviation, the more stretched the values are. And typically, the shorter the mean is. And so you can see that here in the graph where the bigger standard deviation has a lower middle, or I'm sorry, a lower mean probability. And that's something you would expect because that's, that's the way the normal distribution is and, and how it, it, it forms. And it's formed through this equation. Now, unless you're going into grad school, you really don't need to know about this equation. It's called the probability density function. It's not something that if you're an undergrad, you're going to have to really worry about. But it does suck when you get to grad school <laughs> because um, there's a lot of things you have to do with it uh, when you're applying the normal distribution in various ways. And that will probably be a different video. The standard deviation also has another important aspect, and that is applying the empirical rule. The empirical rule says that within one standard deviation, 68% of the data is there, or values. Within two standard deviations, there is 95% of the values, or data. And then within three standard deviations, you have 99.7% of the data. It's also known as the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. I prefer empirical rule because that's just a mouthful with all the numbers. And just to let you know, I will be doing a video where I just go over problems with the empirical rule that will be coming out soon. Now, the great thing about the normal distribution is that you have something called the standard normal distribution, where it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation and variance of one. And what's great about that is that you're able to take any normal distribution and approximate it to that standard normal distribution. Because we know that normal distributions come in different shapes and sizes, it's good to approximate it to, or bring it back to the standard normal where we can then compare the different normal distributions and see how they match up against each other. Because it's taken from the calculation that you're given to make it into a standard normal. The calculation is this, z equals x minus mu over the standard deviation. The x is an example of something that you're comparing it to. So say you have an x value of 20 and a mu value of 20 divided by the standard deviation. It doesn't matter what the standard deviation is because you have a z-score of zero. And the z-score of zero and standard normal is right dab in the middle, which means you have 50%. This is how you use the formula, and by using this formula, you're able to compare percentiles between distributions. And so I will be having a, a video going over examples like this, as well as with hypothesis testing, where this is used. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments section. If you thought this was helpful, please like and share it. Subscribing would really help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and stay nerdy, my friends.